In recent streamer news, a Dan Saltman was live streaming with Destiny and talks about Twitch deleting VODs and shows a comparison between Hassan deleting a VOD versus Twitch deleting it and this has caused a stir within the streaming community and that Hassan's not getting banned versus other streamers that are getting banned over the littlest things. Here is Dan Saltman exposing Twitch on Twitch deleting VODs so Hassan avoids getting banned. Or he didn't delete them, he, he hid them, right? Mm -hmm. And then the this one was already, already hit before. Wasn't an he mistakenly brought it back afterwards okay mm -hmm. now twitch deleted it and you know how you can tell the difference between like when twitch deletes a vod and when you as a user delete a vod or hide a vod twitch deleted this vod it is off the servers completely inaccessible okay so they are losing their mind over this at twitch hq i hope like, that one gone. day i hope i can have a company that would go to bat for me this hard Head up joking about fighting someone equals 30 day ban. Mike from PA putting out a $100,000 bounty. To kill another streamer equals two day 23 hour ban. Hassan playing terrorist videos and explaining how it's a good thing. Deleted VOD and no punishment. He's profitable. Advertisers for the most part don't give a shit and he makes a shit ton in subs. On top of all that, a majority of people making a stink aren't even on Twitch. It's not a matter of profit when Hassan gets treated more favorably than other large content creators. I was surprised Asmongold didn't straight up sign with Kick after that bullshit ban he got despite being loyal to Twitch since its inception. I would argue that if Twitch had handled the XQC and Adept more appropriately as they should have, then he wouldn't have left Twitch. The treatment between women versus men is clear on this platform. A guy can get stalked and have his house broken into by his ex, and Twitch is perfectly fine with, and will still let her stream on their platform, and Nika Lul can beat the shit out of her boyfriend, and still be considered the face of Twitch with no punishment whatsoever. But my god, some angry gamer punches GF, then all of a sudden he gets perma-banned, and I'm pretty sure a male Twitch streamer will 100% get banned if it turns out he's stalking a female Twitch streamer. Canute passes the ball to Julia. Supporting me. What about 100 gifts to take it down by half? Two more, two more. Oh my god. Oh, Ooh, are you okay? Oh shit. Oh, that was right in the face. Are you okay? You have to breathe, breathe a second. Yeah. Tramrix TV says that streamers are paying at 10 to 20k weekly for view bots. And my devs, or not my devs, but the devs that I work with, right? They, they've calculated some of these view bots that we uh, encounter have to cost between 10 to 20,000 a week. Like we're talking like fully automated IPs are completely spread, right? Like the most basic view bot, every IP is gonna show up from one country if you catch my drift, right? I'm sure you can guess which country, right? But there are some complex view bots now that ping IPs, like one IP per goddamn city around the world none of them overlap do you understand there's one way we can catch them now but I, i'm not going to say that way because i'm sure the view botting the technology is going to uh learn and adapt from that but that's the problem do you understand people like i'm telling you clout is a hell of a drug probably not 10k but mira is all bots all the time bro one time there was an error in her stream for a whole day like it just displayed input not found or something and still 2.4k viewers all day el mayo view bots have been an issue on both twitch and kick since the beginning of both platforms hell i always see dude with 200 plus viewers and zero chatters and i'll call them out on it and they always say some dumb sh like if i were botting i'd bot myself to 2000 or more when in reality that's all they can afford paying for like 200 plus viewers for a week i think is like 60 to 100 dollars depending on the service it's honestly insane on how much people are willing to spend on bots for clout but if it gets your name out there it works i guess you guys remember when train was streaming stake gambling on twitch and getting 40 to 50 thousand viewers then the very next day after it got banned and he streams he's sitting on 4000 totally not botted he's totally not projecting train is ethical and honest clueless Tyler One speaks his mind about streamers. Okay, I'm muting. I'm muting. Shut the f up. I'm just waiting for an email. You're f okay, brother. Brother, it's like, dude. Like I get, like there's a lot of streamers, but bro, you've never had a conversation or what? These people have never been in any job environment where they had to shut the f up and let somebody speak for f 20 minutes, dude. What the f was that? Like, we got these, like, toddlers trying to throw, like, one-liners out there. Brother, I do not have time nowadays for this bullshit. Let him talk. Let him explain so we know. Then do your little funny thingies after. I don't know what's going on. No, they're not Zoomers. They're, like, everybody's, like, 30 nowadays, guys. Everybody. So, it's it's not like they're, oh, they're Zoomer. No, bro. They're, they're my age. I don't know. That was... God damn. He was in a Discord with a WoW Classic Hardcore Soda Pop in Streamer Guild. And instead of Soda explaining shit and being done in an hour took like three hours because like 10 streamers couldn't STFU and let the guy talk and were throwing out one-liners trying to be funny the entire time. Virtual becomes the first person to finish 7575 of Khaki Reloaded 5.
We did it! We did it! We did it! We beat Kaki! We beat Kaki! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go, everyone! Oh my god! Good year for him. Accomplished almost all the goals he went for this year except for Bonk Up. Wasn't the first, but got a sick world record on Deep Dip 2. First player to get 75 out of 75 in Khaki. Won Glacial Nations Cup. Got D13 race WR back. Speedrunner of the year back in February. Now let's see if he can actually win the Khaki season on averages. Lots of time left. Destiny reacts to Asmund Gold. Twitter files a comment. Um, when Elon decided to demonetize Destiny for reasons, um, he's going to say, you're not obligated to keep anybody monetized. Mm. Elon demonetized. I'm trying to remember what that was. Elon demonetizing Destiny. Oh, was that after he said that he, he was like happy or he was like he thought he was making jokes about the people that got killed at like the assassination thing? Oh, let me untime you out. Sorry. Yeah, it's basically doxing. Yeah, exactly. The Trump assassination take. Yeah. Uh, Elon clearly has very hands-on approach to influencing Twitter and it's hilarious to pretend that Twitter files hold a candle to it. Twitter files were about Hunter Biden's cock and nothing else. Um, I think the Twitter file showed that Twitter was censoring and silencing things and deleting them based off of what the government told them to do. That's literally exact. Uh, it's like, it's exactly the opposite of, it's exactly the opposite of, of what happened. God, me. It's like literally, like, it's literally exactly Matt. So many of his takes are based on zero research and just vibes. He'll make a claim and end it off with, it's just a common sense opinion. I think most people agree with me, as if that makes it true. Like he said, the magic incantation, which makes the shit he just made up in his head true. Has a DGG, or I'll be the first to say that Asman is even more clueless than shit on him all you want. But Hassan has a somewhat cohesive narrative that he knows a fair amount about and could likely roll a lot of people in debates who lack enough context around political issues. Now, whether or not all of it is factually sound or based mostly on vibes is another issue. But he's clearly more read on things than Asman, who likely never read an article in his life, unless it was about trans people in video games. I would say that Asman is excused because he's not a political streamer, but if you look through his YouTube, I can't really tell if he's a gamer or political streamer these days. His words and opinions carry a lot of weight if he wants to get into the political scene and should definitely be held to a higher standard, if so. Two paintballs hitting each other. Two paintballs hitting each other. Wow. Wow.